I'm Celine Williams, and welcome to the Leading Through Crisis podcast, a conversation series exploring resiliency and leadership in challenging times. My guest today is a familiar face to those of you who have been watching for a while and going to be a familiar voice to those of you who listen. It's Dr. J.J. Kelly, also known as the Punk Rock Doc, who has been on the episode on the on the show a number of times and has recently written two new books to add to her collection holy shit so this is anger the complete guide to honestly assess and effectively manage explosive and implosive anger without toxic positivity i really appreciate your commitment to the titles and holy Holy shit what do women want the young gentleman's guide to creating love and partnership thanks for coming back jj thanks for having me that is a real thing. Like I tried to p- to pare that down many times, but it I just had to say everything in there that I wanted to say. I appreciate it. I like <laughs> I like that there's clarity. You know what you're getting into, and you read the title, you're like, okay, this is one of those times where you are judging a book by the cover. <laughs> well said. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I I I actually I know I said this right before we hit record. Also, I'm sure this conversation will go a thousand different places because it always does with you. But what I said is I'd really, I'd actually really like to talk about anger because, man, one, I think people don't understand anger a lot of times. I think they don't name it effectively. I think they don't know what it looks like, especially if it looks different than however they express anger. I think they don't know what to do when they feel anger. I just... There's so much about it that's like, oh, we don't talk about that. Or it's so over the top that then we avoid it. Yes. Oh my gosh. That is a really decent summary of pretty much why I wrote the book. Yeah. And uh, what I would add to that is the spiritual bypassing and the toxic positivity trend is driving me insane. So that's, you know, that's why I had to have that in there. There's implosive, there's explosive. People avoid talking about anger because the explosive kind scares people. But my point is the implosive shit, the putting a lid on it and repressing anger for decades makes people makes it come out like sideways and people do fucked up shit then. And that I find scarier than the explosive kind. Not that I'm excusing that, you know, violence happens from that too. So we don't... But I mean, that's the one that gets all the bad press that makes people avoid anger altogether when it's just a natural emotion that everyone has. So we want to learn how to manage it effectively. Well, so this is just it, right? Like, I, and I know we were, I, we were talking about this a little bit before, but like every every emotion that we have, whatever it is, anger included, is information. So how yeah. do we express what we need to express in a way that is effective because there's nothing wrong with anger itself as yes. an emotion. that's right right it's in fact it's so necessary and productive because anger is the emotion that tells us that signals to us that our boundaries are being crossed yeah so that is pretty necessary for like even safety sometimes emotional safety certainly yeah um you know, uh, not getting manipulated at work or anywhere, Mm -hmm. you know, you get a vibe from someone and, or, you know, if you, what, what are they doing right now? That's not okay with me. How they're speaking to me. That's not okay with me. Like, do I say something? Do I let it go? But you can't even get to that assessment and problem solving without the validation, the naming of the emotion in the first place. Yeah. People are in so much denial about it that they don't have any skills to effectively manage it, it when it does show up. Yeah. And furthermore, if, okay, who benefits? This is, I'm always kind of asking these questions. Who benefits from us not having any emotional intelligence about the emotion that signals our boundaries are being crossed? You feel me? Yes. Yes. No. I'm I'm almost impossible to manipulate because of emotional intelligence. That's something that affords me high self-esteem, emotional health, physical health, 
freedom, a sense of freedom. Yeah. That scares people. Yeah. That are, don't have the same um, emotional health and well being and skills for managing emotions. And as part of that is that ability to name it for what it is and be okay with it being anger. And also, and this is, please push back on this. I, this is my belief. I'm not saying it's the truth. Also being able to separate it from hurt or from sadness, because I think also a lot of times those things are behind how people are expressing anger because, and it's not actually anger. Totally. And this is, I actually have a whole section in the book about this because when in grad school, like psych grad school, oh, what a shit show, by the way, but <laughs> can you imagine a bunch of like mental health wannabes, even the ones that are professional are so narcy and fucked up. Anyway, I have a whole section on this because it's, it's taught as like a secondary emotion which I think has a little, I've always sort of thought it has a little bit of a invalidation of it as a primary, primary, secondary. I didn't, I, I never liked that language, but I do think that the several emotions can happen at the same time. Sure. Absolutely. I think there are cultural things. Like I talk about how being Irish American and um, Midwestern family of origin that Anger was an emotion that was acceptable in our family, whereas fear was not. Mm -hmm. So I still have to watch when somebody I care about might be like doing something that I think was it, they're harming themselves in some way, whether it be clients or personally. Um, I, it scares me. My initial hit is fear. I'm worried about them. And then I'm like ready to yell at them. Right. You know? Yes. But I know that because I don't deny, Yeah, you know, people might have shame about admitting something like that because they see it as a flaw. Right. Well, in dialectics with the Venn diagram, we don't do that kind of binary thinking. Everything is on a spectrum and I've worked on that. So like, that's okay. And I get to have flaws. And is that even a flaw? You know what I mean? Like yes. we can just be honest with ourselves about intention and how that doesn't always intention doesn't always translate to impact the oh, road yeah. is paved with good you know so you have to look at both how i'm intending it how it lands yeah do people that know me know that i go there am i am i like rancid with my anger toward them absolutely not they know that it's loving but i still have a responsibility to know that I have a tendency to do that and to circle back and be like, hey, you know what? What you said scared me. That gave me a little fright for you. That's why I'm saying it like this. You know, we we're saying about family. You can't just say whatever. You got to circle back and explain yes. and eat the shit sandwich and be like, all right, I'm going to calm down a little bit here with this. And I, you just scared me. Yeah, I'm worried about you doing something like that. And I, you know, I'm, and you know me, I go to pissed. So yes, we all come from a family that a family system that encouraged certain emotions and discouraged others. And I think there are plenty of um, family as culture or, you know, um, ethnicity as culture, race as culture, where you grew up in the world, all that is a we're cultural one, right? And we come from different systems and those systems encourage certain emotions and discourage certain emotions, which I think is such a pity because the ones that are discouraged are people stay ignorant about it. They stay a blind spot. And the ones that are encouraged get overused and overgeneralized. And so they're still ignorant about the ones that they don't think they have. Yeah. So that never gets enhanced that emotional intelli intelligence around the blind spot, systematically discouraged emotions. So yeah. it's a, it's a pity all the emotions signal different things to us. And the amount of people that like try not to cry. And I get, you know, like there are certain 
you don't want to cry at work much or shit like that. Okay, yes. And think about it. The body has a system where it lets liquid out of our eyeballs that when we let that happen, it regulates our central nervous system, letting sad or mad, by the way, or fear. People cry for a bunch of different reasons. And the body physically helps your central nervous system calm down from it. Yep. Mind gets in the way of that process. People stuffing that shit. Try not peeing for a week and see how your body does. You know, like stuffing a cry is like that. Stuffing Mm -hmm. anger. Even, Even MDs at this point, who are the last to get on board with emotions affecting physical stuff. That's not how they're trained. They even are like anger related to heart attacks. You know, like they're starting to catch up to the different physical things that are exacerbated by explosive or implosive anger. Yeah. TMJ, is that what that, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, The jaw stuff, oh my gosh. Stuffed anger, red flag, man, headaches. Like, and it's different for a lot of people. And it's similar for a lot of people too. Like it's, you see patterns enough. You start like, not definitely, but asking about it. Mm -hmm. Hey, you had this jaw stuff for a while. Oh yeah. I got to go to the dentist. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Go get your night guard. Sure. Um, but we might want to talk about why that, what is the inception of some of that stuff? And people want to intellectualize and medicalize it. And not talk about the stuff they can't definitely prove with a book. I mean, prove. I mean, what the hell? Yeah. Yep. I, it's, so I want to make a comment and then I have a question. It's funny when you were talking about, about crying specifically. I was, I remember being, I, when I was a teenager, I was like, I'm, I'm not going to cry. This is like, I am going to control Yes. My tears, by the way, I do not recommend this to anyone. Because teenage girls cry, mad cry. And oh, then yeah. People don't take them seriously. Yes. Exactly. So I was like, I am not crying anymore. And I, I realized that I was really good at like not crying for a lot of sad th- Like I got, but there was a point where I was like, oh, when I am frustrated, frustrated, I, I am a fr- to this day a frustrated crier but I'm like I have no issue crying in general now if, if it's gonna happen it's gonna happen right um you know except maybe in movie theaters I do try and calm that down so I'm not like sobbing in the background the public is a little bit different for right. folks but generally speaking like I I'm totally w- but like frustrated crying it's still the thing that the minute I'm frustrated I can be and it can be small things in a restaurant they don't have something I want to eat when I'm really really hungry and I just can't make the decision cry frustrated cry right like it's so interesting and I just point that out because I think we that is it I mean that is a form that can be turned into anger but like there's nothing wrong with identifying that and knowing what that is and also angry criers the other thing the other time I cry which is that's why I'm saying it to me that's often the route to anger at a certain point but it's like that has always been a consistent thing for me and it's fascinating to me how rarely we talk about crying as part of things like anger or frustration and not just or fear and not just sad and not like obviously it's fine to cry crying anytime we're fine but like, it's not just sadness. It is, it is just, there are too many emotions. How do I get out of you? Yeah. It's a tension reliever. It needs something about the body says, Ooh, too much tension. I need a release of some kind. And it's a release of tension. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is your question related to that or is it something else? Cause I want to go on that a little. It, it was something else. So go in on this. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go all over the place because this is what we do. So. I might, I might interpret that you continue to be a frustrated crier. I bet you might be 
missing anger or stuffing anger more than you want to be in general so it comes out in the frustrated like are you I would want to if you were my client I would want to check out your skills around expressing anger like a, a medium amount of anger not little shit the bigger stuff yeah how skilled you are at expressing that in general mm -hmm. because someone like you could do it without crying now forget the hangry stuff like that's that that's extreme, you know, like if you always cried in that situation, I wouldn't go after that in any right. way. Um, but knowing you a little bit too, I would bet that you are a little bit uncomfortable with like medium to high levels of anger and would try to find conflict resolution in a way that maybe you don't say how pissed you are. I think that's a very reasonable, especially when it gets into higher levels of anger. Yes, I will exactly. try and deal with things long before it gets to that. Yeah, well, but that's I'm, strategic and smart. Yeah. And I, and I don't, I, I mean, I don't frustrate or cry that often to be, but I don't always express what I need to express effectively before it would get to that point, which is when that would come out. But I yeah, do yeah. try and be like, I don't want it to get to that point because that is sure. not always productive. And at that point for me, it's often that it's small things that have built up that I haven't dealt with that get me to that point. Totally. That's one. Two is sometimes offenses happen that create medium, like right then and there, and there's yes. no lead up. Yes. Medium anger in that point, in those I am okay with because that is the, Oh, and I will acknowledge I'm a hundred percent that person that gets like annoying, like that hyper focus, very calm. Like, okay, let's get into this in a way that is. Do you say you're pissed in those situations? Oh, I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't use the language of pissed, but I will be like, do, do you, you say this? angry? I will. I will. Good question. I, you I don't, don't know that That's I don't. I no, I probably don't. But I will call behavior out in a way where it's like. You do understand how offensive that is, right? See, and I don't think I don't teach that. Yeah. Because no, that is the focus on the other person and it and it misses the validation, the internal validation yeah. part of like naming the emotion. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then your thing second. But like it's it may not do you real you do realize how offensive that is? Um, they might not. And you don't get to define what offensive is in a factual way. Right. It has to be like, I think. I'm offended by this because. Yeah. yeah. You're pissing me off talking to me like that. Yeah. You're making me really angry with how you're talking to me right now. Like there can be professional ways, more professional. I think it's white, but you know, whatever. Um, I tend to go right. But, but I don't freak out on people. I'll right. be like, you're pissing me off right now. Please stop talking to me like that or I'm going to leave. Like, I see no problem with that kind of thing, even in a professional environment. Now, you might disagree and reasonable people can disagree. We all have our own style. Yes. We all have different ways that we behave that match our values. Our values can differ fine to all of that. The overall point is most people don't say the words and then do the problem solving, validate, then problem solve, acceptance, then change. And then they're, they miss knowing that, that emotional intelligence that comes with knowing what they're even feeling. I, so I agree with that. And I think that, um, I very much agree with that. I just want to note that a hundred percent. I, the difference that I would say that my, and it's, I don't think this is a right or wrong. I think the difference in how I would say in a professional yep. setting that I would manage it or deal with it, because what the example I was giving was more in a professional setting. I will tell someone in my family or, you know, a partner or a really good friend. I'll be like, you like, I will, that's when I will say pissing me off. Like that really pisses me off. Let's not right what, or frustrated or whatever. That's perfectly fine for annoyed, whatever. But what I, 
what I will, what I usually would, what, how I would do it. And often how I will suggest people to do it in a professional setting is I think it is less about, and this is an opinion. I'm not saying this is the truth. I think it's less important that the other person here that I feel this way because what often happens in a professional setting is that then the per the other person and I really hate to like I this is just re re the reality of my experience is that because of how hyper masculine patriarchal right. workplaces are they right. shut down when as soon as you say I feel you know th that made me angry I feel something about this they will shut down so in my experience, in order for this to become productive, it's often more effective to acknowledge what the feeling is for me internally. It doesn't matter as much if it gets said out loud. If I know that you pissed me off, then we're, I can navigate that if I've acknowledged, if I haven't acknowledged it, I'm going to navigate it shitty all the time because I don't know what I'm feeling. Sure. But if I've acknowledged it for myself. It only works too, yes. Right then I can navigate this differently without having to say the word in the moment or having to say it to the other person. And that is my, that is my exact point within a patriarchal white supremacy culture. Yeah. But then the solution is to adhere to that and not, and do the hyper masculine in order to be effective. I mean, you can make an argument for that. It, I I want to change something from within there, and you possibly facilitate doing that later, mm -hmm. which I respect. Yeah. Um, I don't want this whole thing to continue to be hyper masculine, and I actually think the patriarchy hurts men so much. Because they don't do this either. I mean, I do work in with corporate people yep. who do the I'm front. Maybe it's not pissed. Maybe it's frustrated. Maybe it's annoyed. But like, do name the emotion within yeah. the corporate environment yes. in a way that matches your values and the company's values. Yep. Yep. I do think that has to change and that it will benefit everyone and i agree with you and i i want to i don't i'm not saying you do this to continue to support this long term or any I know. Like, I know. by any stretch yeah i know and there are there if someone is unwilling to hear it and it's going to shut a conversation down it's going to make you less effective in the moment that you need to be effective i also don't think it's necessarily the time to step into it if it's not going to actually do what you hope it's going to do and i think unfortunately that happens a lot and i think the other thing is that the people who are more often willing to to use that language to say i'm feeling this way are women or are people of color and then they are dismissed and it actually makes it worse inside these structures and does that make sense? Like if there, well, if I don't know about makes it worse. Um, I get the for effect them, for thing. them. The burden for them is more what I meant. Sorry. Yeah. And that's victim blaming. Okay. I think, um, I, I hear what you're saying and I think it's fucked. <laughs> like, uh, listen, I'm not justifying it. I just think that that's often what happens. I mean, do you know how many people try to dismiss my shit? I mean, it's only for the doctor title that anybody in situations of like high up male white that they even listen to me because having the doctor title is part of this structure that <laughs> commands respect as if what I do and say doesn't command respect come on but yeah I know what you're saying yeah. that's a reason to go into hell of debt to get the doctor title because that's what works in an imperfect system so yes we are agreeing on yeah. more than we're disagreeing oh, absolutely I don't Absolutely. even think we disagree. I think we approach it differently. I'm a little older and the doctor title does fucking afford. I'm saying the older, not because I'm wiser, because I'm less tolerant. I mean, I would also go with wiser, but <laughs> I'll take less tolerant if that's where you want to go. 
And, and I just, I ain't got no time for bullshit yeah. anymore. And the doctor title affords me some like leeway in this. I do agree with that. And I think that that's part of it is you do. Ha- and I, I think it's a wonderful thing to have that leeway, to be able to say that and to, to be that direct and change it. And I think if I think of people I've worked with or who are working organizations, especially those who are women or people of color, if they say that, Oh, if I were a black yeah. woman, I'd be fucked. Right. That damages the, and they don't have a doctor title. Their yeah. reputation is damaged in a different way. So a lot of what we talk about is like, you need to know what you're feeling, but then how can you express that in a way that lands for that person that doesn't damage your, so you can continue to be effective. And then, you know, we'll go hopefully go back and move it along and change it in other ways. But I, I do like, I think it's why it's so important that you have a do- your doctor title and you do speak into these things and you have the opportunities to speak yeah. into these things with people because not everyone has that leeway. Yeah. Yeah. It's and, a way to use privilege for good. And look, the it's going to take, I mean, I sincerely, truly more than anything, hope that these systems change as slow as it might feel sometimes. I really do hope they do. And it is going to take all these different approaches to change them. And there's not, sadly, there's no one thing that's going to be like, this is the approach and it all changes. It's going to come from everywhere. Totally. And enough times, like the repetition of it um, in different models, but saying basically the same thing over and over. And, And I do think, you know, speaking of dialectics, the Venn diagram, I think the one, two punch of you with me, you know, back and forth, you give them a little bit more, I don't know what tolerance or something. And then I hit them in the body, you know, (laughs) those body shots. Yeah, (laughs) totally. totally. Um, And you know, the funny thing is too, like I thrive in a lot of masculine environments too, just with my personality and and so it it is a nice, you know, we can always find ways to connect. And then I do think humor helps the medicine go down a little bit. Busting chops, you know, like most people expect that from me just with my personality so that when I do it, they're not that surprised. And yeah. even if they are surprised by what I actually said, they're not that surprised that like some sort of humor shaming chops busting thing flew out of my mouth course and then they're like they're the weak link in their own version of the patriarchy if they don't also laugh you know like there's method to the madness too yeah Yeah. i so there is no i've never had a doubt that there was method to your madness jj i'm really (laughs) glad because many people do but i am i'm like thinking of like 12 different things when i'm with somebody in each moment yeah. like what is the approach here I mean yeah and it's great I just noticed this week too like I was like I, I told my brother I was like I am on fucking fire this week like how have I every time I think like oh this is great to be so good at this when a leveling up I mean of course everybody levels up if they're like putting effort into their own growth in any realm um I'm still consistently surprised at a leveling up though and delighted, of course, but it's so, I I would love to know how it happens so I can recreate it quicker or something. I don't know, Yeah. Uh, but maybe that's controlling. I don't know, but I've noticed that, you know, it's, it's thrilling to like, just be able to cut to it quicker, just less bullshit And, you know, when you develop relationships and you get to know people that automatically happens where you can just go in a little harder and they can, I have to judge whether they can take it. I want it to be disruptive and uncomfortable, but not tank them, you know? So I'm always kind of doing this balance of discomfort, tension, but I don't want to hurt them. Yeah. I don't want them to shut down as you were saying. Yeah. Um, but that tension is important all the time. Otherwise I'm just like taking money to enable people in their own bullshit. And that doesn't sit right with me. So, so I think that 
I that concept of tension and creating tension mm -hmm. I think is really interesting because I think a lot of people don't create they avoid even creating a tiny bit of tension often because they are afraid of someone being angry and yes. retaliating or yes. whatever, the, being vindictive, whatever it is. And so they create no tension. That's right. And they don't talk about anything and they don't get right. into anything. And then it's just avoidant, avoidant, which is then yes. ultimately implosive anger comes out at the end of all of that. self-betrayal, that causes shame, which is actually probably the next book. Shame is such a sneaky one They've betrayed themselves. It's required for co consistent pleaser behavior. Self-betrayal is required. And that is never shame-free. And then they got to hide shame away because it's so uncomfortable to feel shame. And then that spikes anxiety. So then that increases their chances of acting in a way that doesn't match their values again. Yeah. So yes, the avoidant, uh, avoidance of even little bits of conflict i'm constantly teaching go into conflict while you're still scared you get the courage points that build self-esteem and confidence from that um it often goes better because people wait too long and then they use anger as fuel to which completely takes the fear away so now they're in this righteous anger place and now they're bound to say something that doesn't match their values that they regret later any asshole that without courage can fuel a fucking conflict with anger and rage everyone can do that but then you're more likely to erode your self-esteem than if you did it when you were scared and then the courage builds your self-esteem you yeah. get to be proud of your behavior for doing the scary thing. Plus, you plan it out. You say, you know, I'll give people the steps to how to say the thing. You plan it out a little bit. So when you're scared, you don't say so many words and water the whole thing down. Less words is almost always effective, which is why anger is fuel works so beautifully. Because people don't do that hella words thing that waters it down. They go right to the bone, but they overshoot it because they haven't built any skills for how to do that kind of thing. Yeah. Like people with this profession, people have been raging out at me or passive aggressively taking digs at me for over 20 years. I see it coming before they even know what they're doing. So an ability to not take that personally like they're projecting stuff. I mean, I'm that that's the role, right? Like project your mom stuff or project your boss stuff or whatever. I said a word that you don't like that some teacher said to you that shamed you in second grade, you know? So I hold all this stuff. Yeah. And don't take it personally so that it, we can stay clear and be like, hang on, hang on. Is this even about me right now? I can see you're angry. Let's talk about what it's about. And then to be exposed to someone who doesn't crumble in the face of rage or anger is such a comforting sort of redirect for people. You know, like not everybody's going to die if you're mad at them. Yes. If more people have skills about how to like, Christ, there are a million things to be mad at. You think it's the thing out there's fault? What we're mad at resides within. And then the triggers flare that up. Our triggers are our responsibility, not other people's responsibility. Mm -hmm. you, oh, you just triggered me. Yeah. So what are you going to do about it? Quit implying that it's my job to manage your triggers. Even as a shrink, it's not my job to manage your emotions. I can teach you how to do that. I can model for you how not to be reactive to your bullshit. But it would be codependent for me to do it for you. That's not healthy. I'm not going to enable that. You sit with your discomfort. Yeah, you ought to feel some shame about what you just said to me. Yeah. Now let's go back. If you had a redo, take a couple of breaths. If you had a redo, 
of how to handle this, what would you say instead? What matches your values? Now we've regulated the emotion a little bit. I validated that you have the emotion, did not validate the behavior. And now, hey, let's do the redo. You can do that in life all the time. If you're ever up at night ruminating, oh, I fucking should have said this, that asshole. Oh, I'm going to give that a piece of my mind. Any kind of nighttime rumination is usually pissed. It could be fear, but usually rumination is pissed. And so then go back. How would I deal with this if it happened for the first time tomorrow? I want to say how it made me feel. I want to say, do ask for something or say no to something. And then say why, if you even say why. You could just make the request. Please don't speak to me that way again. And then you could, well, I think our relationship will go much more smoothly when we communicate with mutual respect. That can be taught. It's actually pretty simple, that kind of assertiveness formula. And when you get exposed to your own anger or other people's anger, you build your emotional intelligence around how to manage it. It's the only way. Denial doesn't get you more intelligent about anything. No. It keeps it a blind spot. You keep yourself ignorant. That is smart people do that all the time. It's the dumbest thing ever. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then make up really smart sounding bullshit. It's still bullshit. I deal with geniuses all the time that do dumb shit. Because we're all human what? at the end of the day, like yes. it or sadly. We all have defenses. We all have emotions are not encouraged. I mean, much more so with female bodied people. But in general, you're saying too, even when it's even when it's a woman, and especially if it's a woman of color, add queer in there too, anything that's non-majority, and then it's you're you're gonna get dismissed. Yep. For being emotionally intelligent, unless you're bombastic like me and you're you follow up and you're like, hey, do not dismiss what I just said. Me feeling frustrated by what you said to me is actually a pretty natural emotion considering the dickish thing you just said to me. Right. Yeah. And if most people are not willing to do it, I have so many years of practice. But like sometimes that is the only thing that's it's, it's like surprises them, you know, it like stops them in their tracks. They've never had that happen before. And you only have that element of surprise kind of once. Yeah with people yeah i think it's that i think oh my god there's i know we have to wrap in a minute and there's one hundred thousand things that i want to say per usual but i there's i think people are so afraid of what someone else might do and i think so many when if they were to have a conversation like that and i think so many people will hear something like don't talk to me that way and the people pleaser in them goes, okay, cool. And they don't acknowledge that they're upset at that or pissed or have a reaction. And they people please. And they're like, yeah, of course. And then it builds resentment. Then it comes out another way. And I think totally. there's so many layers of that, that build up from that, which is because people take things personally. One of the things that you said was you don't take things personally. And I strongly resonate with that because I, I pointed out to people all the time you know and I'm always like I know it's not about me and I will say that to people I know this isn't about me Amen. so let's have this conversation because if it was about me we'd have a very different conversation but I know I know it's not yes. but that is such an there's not a lot of people who don't take everything personally who don't jump to that immediately I was my I was talking to my best friend about this a few days ago a situation, legal situation has nothing to do with her. It's like a, a building flat situation. And she was like, it feels like a personal attack. That's not a feeling. Well, I, yes. Thought. Yes. yes. I, I, that's I, a yes. whole other conversation. Yes. But it was the, the point was that she was taking it personally. And I was like, but what you need to explore that? Like what is going on? But right. most people can't even acknowledge right. it. There's probably some fear in there, you know, oh, geez, that surprised me, not in a pleasant way. That can be fear or she's pissed. 
Yeah. Oh, and not knowing it or admitting it like, and it's, you know, once you have this light bulb moment of like, oh, people really are just saying shit mostly about their own programming and their own life experiences. And they're just barfing that stuff on everybody that's around them because they don't have any emotional intelligence. All that is true. And even that truth can create shame and pretending like they do have emotional intelligence, which is going backward. We have to admit we don't have any. I thought the pandemic did that pretty nicely because people are day drinking and wanting to kill their family. Like there was a rise in, oh, I need some help. And then they flooded a mental health system that's, in my opinion, pretty fucked. Mm -hmm. But, But at least they know, hey, I don't have any emotional intelligence skills. Great here like (laughs) let's get some but if there are people in positions of privilege and power that are like no i have that i took a class and now i have emotional intelligence and now i can teach emotional intelligence yeah right bullshit but if if the admission a lot of not having a knowledge allows for the curiosity about learning but so many smart people are so insecure mm-hmm. that they want to cover up any sort of knowledge they don't have. There's so much knowledge out there. We don't know everything. So right. oh, yes. I, I just, so as you said that, part of that, I think is the, is what happens when, you know, you, some, you, someone says to you, like, don't talk to me like that, or I don't, you know, I really don't appreciate that. Or I feel this way. And I think that lack of curiosity is the reason that people go, they people please, they go, okay. Yep. They're not even curious about what their own reaction is or, and I think that that is such an important point that you let just applies in so many ways inside of this is like, if we are curious about our own reaction, even when someone says that, do you know, just that would break so much of the cycle. Oh yeah. It slows it down. And I don't even, I don't even fault people for that I- instant fear that either makes them people please to make it go away right. or, or react and demonize the person like one way or, I mean, that, that is a natural primal impulse, but we as emotionally intelligent, potentially human beings could learn to move past the primal into something a little more sophisticated like emotional intelligence and it's not like I don't have that when someone someone comes to me people consistently think I like to fight I don't it scares me too of course it's just I move through that in order to make this interaction a teaching point that's my job. That's how I sleep at night. Yeah. Is to not be reactive with people paying me to teach them how to be non-reactive. I mean, what the fuck? Yeah. And even seeing that can be enlightening. But curiosity and admission of not knowing everything is so damn freeing. I wish more geniuses would do that. Because that's true genius, I think is knowing you don't know everything. And then, and also I think being able to break down really, really complex concepts into something that a a lay person can understand. I think there's genius in that as well. Um, But yeah, the curiosity and and fear and anger, they just take it away. Yeah. Curiosity slows down all the reaction in, in favor of learning. Yeah educating i agree Mm, pleasant Um, conversation thank you thank you for having this conversation with me um we'll we'll do this again soon because i just really like talking to you and it's always interesting and goes unexpected places so thank you uh for coming on the show and we'll link your books and link your site and link you in all of the notes hey and link you too (laughs) What a pleasure. Thanks, Celine. Thank you. Thanks for joining me today on the Leading Through Crisis podcast. If you enjoyed this conversation, 
please take a minute to rate and review us on your podcast app. If you're interested in learning more about any of our guests, you can find us online at www.leadingthroughcrisis.ca.